Several years ago, in 1912, to be exact, a great event unveiled itself on the face of the earth. A man they called William Perry designed a ship that became quite popular in the nations of the earth. That ship's name is called the Titanic. He sailed off from Liverpool on the 10th of April, 2012. Built by Holland and Wolf, they set sail to the Americas. At that time, the ship was said to be the fastest ship on the face of the earth. The most luxurious, in fact, the largest ship on the face of the earth. The ship was about 883 feet long. It was so high that it was said to be about 11 stories high up in the sky. And the people who had built this ship had built it with anticipation and hope. They had built it with the confidence that nothing will happen to that ship in the waters. In fact, one of the people bragged that not even God could sink that ship. The ship had about 16 compartments in it. And four compartments down floor was so built so tight that it was said to be waterproof. When they set out on the 10th of April, a few days or weeks later, the story goes that this gigantic ship, the first of its kind, ran into an iceberg on the high sea. Unexpectedly, an iceberg is a set of eyes on the high sea. When the ship ran into this iceberg, it broke not just one or two of those compartments. It broke five of the compartments. Four was watertight, but it broke also the fifth one. And then suddenly, suddenly, Water began to slip in into the ship. And this gigantic ship that nobody expected would ever sink. Suddenly, history records that this ship sank into the mighty waters. It didn't sink because of the iceberg. It sank because Somehow, the ship allowed what was outside of it, what was surrounding it, the problems, the anxiety, 
like we have today in the world. He allowed water to slip into the ship gradually. And just in a few hours, this ship that would seem to be unsinkable, this ship that nobody expected would ever sink, suddenly found itself at the bottom of the ocean. It not only sank, but it divided itself into two. And sank so completely that thousands of people died because in that ship that very day, they had about 2,200 people, both passengers and crew members. Only quite a handful escaped death on their, thrive, on their fearful day. Only but a few. Thousands died in that water. Just because he allowed what was surrounding it to slip into it. Right now, all over the world, we have anxieties and problems and troubles all over the place. And it seems to surround us, all about us, seem to be everywhere. You see, just like that ship Titanic, 11 stories high, big, like a mighty giant that cannot be brought down. No matter how strong, you might seem to be. It could be coronavirus. It could be Ebola. It could be cancer. It could be anything. The truth is, none of these things are inside. But as men, you have a capacity to either allow it to slip in or to refuse it. You see, if you have ever seen movies or sailed on a boat before, you notice that those who paddle the boat, whenever water slips into a boat, whether because of rain or because water was, was slipping through the under of the boat, what the people who paddle the boat do, some of them do, is while the others are paddling, they are also scooping water out to make sure that that thing that is outside and beneath will not come into that boat. All the anxieties came out to tell you this morning that you will be okay. That you are stronger than even what you think. No matter what despair you might be confronted with. No matter what the anxiety might be. Don't just watch CNN all the time. Watch the Bible. Read the Bible. Study the word. Because he's the only one that makes a way where there is none. He's the only hope for the hopeless. Others might have security. They might have servants. They might have caretakers in the house. They might have people to help them. But sometimes when you have nobody, when you still have to go to the market, when you still have to go to the shop to shop yourself, when you're locked in and there's no help, you just need to turn to the one who can only guarantee your hope and help. Our Lord was speaking to the people in John's Gospel 16. He said, I tell you these things that you may have peace in me. Because in this world, there will be many tribulations. Many tribulations. He said, but do not be worried. Don't be anxious. He said, because I have overcome the world. So the reason primarily like he came is to overcome, to conquer, so that you and I can be much more than conquerors. So that you and I can be victors on the face of the earth. So that you and I can be winners on the face of the earth. So that you and I can become overcomers, even though we have fought no battle. But hear me. It is important that in this hour, in this moment, to understand that these are sacred moments. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, I see days ahead of me, and I see trouble all over the place. But in spite of the trouble, again I say to you, in spite of the trouble, not only will you overcome, 
you have overcome already. For greater is he that is in you, he that is in us, than he that is in this world. So cheer up in spite of the despair. Cheer up in spite of the troubles. Cheer up even though coronavirus may have come to the door knocking. Just know that if he dares to come in, it will go out the same way he came in. Because the life of God is at work inside of you. You see that water slipped in. It was small, intangible, very small, intangible, unnoticed. It slipped in. Don't allow water to slip in. Don't allow the news you hear every day to give you the premise, the platform to allow doubt to enter inside of you. Even when a neighbor dies and God forbid. Even when a friend dies and God forbid. Even when you hear that a friend may have also caught this disease. Still stand. Even though when it comes knocking in on your body. Still stand. Because there is nothing greater than the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. He came. So that those who have no God will have what? He came so that those who have no hope will have a hope in him. You are not the Titanic. You are the son of God. You are not the Titanic. You are the son of the most high God. You are not the Titanic. You are Elohim's child. You see several years ago. They had fought Israel over and over the nation of Israel. But this same God said to them, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Over and over, he said, I'll bring you back to this land. Over and over, he said, I will protect you. Over and over, I will nourish you. Centuries and centuries have passed after Abraham's day. But God is still with them till today. I want to say to you that because you're the son of God, that God is still with you. Therefore, no weapon fastened against you will ever prosper. And know this disease or poverty or challenges might be like that water that entered the Titanic. It could be like that. The Bible says small foxes, not mighty ones. They're the ones that kill the vine. Don't allow the devil to put his leg into your house. Because if he puts one leg and you do not notice... He will put the second leg. And if you don't notice, he will go call his friends. But stand upon God's word. So that you're not defiled by time, circumstances, or the things that you hear all around you. The scripture in Proverbs 4, 23. He says in all things. He said, keep your heart. Keep your heart. Guard your heart, some scripture says, with all diligence. All diligence is carefulness, is watchfulness. He said, because out of it, slow flows the issues of life. Out of it are the issues of life. Because you see, your heart stores information. Your heart stores news. Your heart stores your conviction. Your heart stores the word that you read. Your heart stores every experience that you have on the face of the earth. It is your heart that will store whether you are a conqueror or not before it prevails over your life. It is your heart that will store the pain, the anxiety, even failures that you may have had, the convictions you have. If you say God is not on your side, it's your heart that stores it. And he says that same wavelength to your brain. To the extent that your brain applies all over your body what you have believed inside of you. Over and over in the scripture, you hear the Lord says, it is your faith. It is your faith. It is your faith that has healed you. It is your faith that has delivered you. Not because he didn't have power. Our Lord has power all the time. Not because he cannot do it. But he, needed, he needs us to know that it is important that you have your faith. It is important that you believe in something or someone. It is important. Why? Because it is the faith that makes you right above all things. So in this period of anxiety and pain and confusion all over the face of the earth, it is important that you protect your heart. 
It is important that you shield it from news. Oh, coronavirus is killing people all over the place. Yes, it's killing people, but it's not going to kill you. Yes, it's all over the city. I know, but I'm safe because I'm in a safe pain. It's killed a neighbor. I know. It's all over the U.S. I know. It's in London. I know. But I'm safe in him. Whether it comes knocking or it doesn't come knocking, I'm still safe in Jesus Christ because he's greater above all things. Colossians 1, verse 15 to 18. He said, we look at Jesus, the invisible. We look at Jesus, the invisible one that created all things. We look at Jesus, the invisible that became visible. I'm putting it in my own words. One that we can see. And yet one that created things that can be seen and unseen. The head of all principalities and powers. One that died for us. To save us. To rescue us. From the pains of this world. From the anxiety of this world. A lot of people said. Some people said. That the Titanic sang because the people also bragged. That even God could not sink it. I know that man could feel a conviction to say that God has something to do with it. But there's no hate in God. If you own a car and people are driving your car all around the place, you won't have any point to prove that the car is yours. It's yours. God has no hate in him. It was Maria Angelo that said, love liberates. It liberates you. She was pregnant at the age of 17. And came to her mother and said, Mom, I'm leaving home. And the mom said to her, are you leaving home? He said, yes, I'm leaving home. What are you going to do? I'm going to find work to do. So she left home. And the mom said, no matter what happens, if you have to come back home, come back home. A couple of months later, because of challenges, she came back home. And when she came home, the mom embraced her. I said, oh, I made this food. I made that. Come sit down, eat. The mom then asked her, why are you home? I told you so. No, because there's no point to prove. Love liberates. That's why when you come to the master, when you come to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, when you look up to him, he's not going to say, oh, I told you so, that there's pain in this world. If you have strayed home, he's not going to say, I told you so. That there will be pain all over the place. There will be disease all over the place. I'm your safety ground. No. He would welcome you and embrace you. He would hold a party for you. Even the angels would jump all around because the son has come home. You see, your faith in him, your trust in him is the homecoming of a son. Don't let anybody. The Bible says, woe is he. Whose hope is in a man? Whoa, why? Because man fails. Why? Because sometimes man do not have an answer. Look at the world today. All the scientists, all the doctors, all the people involved in research. Yes, a tiny thing in the world. It's keeping everybody not being able to sleep in the night. Having sleepless nights. Worried. In anxiety and pain, people are losing loved ones. Whether they be children, husbands or wives, brothers or sisters, parents, they're losing people all over the place. Losing them all, all over the place. And so they are in pain. And they don't know what to do. I came to comfort you. I came to live a word by the Holy Spirit. To tell you that none of us have answers. But Jesus is the answer. He doesn't have answer. He's the answer. He doesn't have solutions. He is the solution. Run to him. Run. Don't walk towards him. Run. Because even after now, people have predicted many more will come. They say another is coming. 
the truth is, many more will come because the Bible says so. It could not, it might not be disease. It might not be sickness. It could be problems in your relationship. It could be your house rent. It could be money to start that business. It could be poverty. Hear me. Man, years and years, have always tried to run from something, particularly in Africa. They're either running from which, or they're running from poverty. When you're running from something, you're not running towards anything. But when you're running towards something, you forget that it's possible you're also running from something. We were not designed to run from anything. We were designed to run to the master. Except fornication or youthful lust. Any other thing? No way. Run to Jesus this morning. And he would answer everything. But now use your time creatively. Martin Luther King Jr. said nothing. Nothing could be more tragic than for men to live in this revolutionary times and fail to achieve new attitudes and the new mentality, new mental outlook that this new situation has necessitated. Hear me and understand this. Many challenges will confront the people. Many things will happen. Once you know and once you do not know. Your new attitude, the new outlook, is to believe more. Is to walk with him more. Is to pray more. Is to stand at the mountain top like Martin Luther did many years ago. And see the glory. He said, we have black sons and black daughters. With white sons and white daughters would walk together in a table of brotherhood. You need to see your own vision, your own life. Where you would ride the skies in your own plane. Where you would preach the gospel all over the nations of the earth. Where you would live in abundance, in tremendous wealth. But you will not brag about it. Because it's your nature. It's your life. It's your identity. What you do now will prepare you for that future. What you do now will arm you to become either powerful or less powerful. What you do with this sacred time, sacred time that is compelled upon you, necessity compels you now. But in that necessity, thrive in it because that's what God wants us to do at this moment. You're blessed beyond measure and no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Hold on. Don't let go of your faith in Christ. Don't give up and don't give in to Satan's antics. Because you're powerful. You're wonderfully made. You're beautiful. You are a success already. Much more than a conqueror. And there's no one like you on the face of this earth. If you're listening to me now, and you've never given your life to Jesus. Never surrendered what you call your life. Because anyone who doesn't even know him or have accepted him has no life in the first place. It's now a moment to dedicate yourself to him. I pray for you that the Holy Ghost will create more convictions inside of you. I pray and I declare over you that he who the Lord sets free is free indeed. In 1958, there was also an epidemic on the face of the earth. Thousands of people died. But those who lived, sooner or later forgot the pains because they have life. I prophesy over you that the life of Christ will saturate you. I prophesy over you that the life of Christ will hold you together. I stand upon the mountaintop now and I say to you, rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, you are alive and you will declare the goodness of God over your life. After this season, after this season, hear me. When they look around, they will see you. 
When they look up, they will see you. When they look forward, they will see you. Because you'll be moving forward at the speed of light. You'll be advancing forward to bring down all that which God has kept for you. To achieve all the things that God has prepared for you. Welcome to God's kingdom. And like we said last week, last week, welcome to achieving the incredible and doing the impossible. You're blessed beyond measure in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm sure that you are blessed by that word. Don't forget, you are not a titanic. You are the son of the most high God. And he himself will keep you from sinking. You cannot sink. You will survive in the name of Jesus. Just at the same time next Sunday, don't forget we're also on Tesla. 593.1. So if you cannot come on our social media platform, please hook up on 593.1 radio. It's absolutely free. And you'll also get the message from the set. If you want to make any donations or seeds or tithes or offerings, please take down these uh, account details. Ensure that you address it to Grace Consulate Evangelical Outreach. With the account details is Zenith Bank 101 389 4372. The account number again is 101 389 Four three seven two. God bless you, real good, and keep you. Stay safe.